Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video. Today I want to talk about my most carried for, you know, what's beginning to be the springtime. I, you know, it's, we're, we're definitely past March 21st when I'm filming this, although there was a giant snowstorm here the other day. Uh, but it's starting to think about maybe being spring up here in uh, Ontario. And what what I've been in, what's been in my pocket during this time, uh, I've got a pretty decent cross section here to share with you for in terms of my most carried. And so you guys know the drill here. What I do is kind of you know share with you guys the knives that have been in rotation the most lately, what it is that has keep kept me coming back to these particular knives, and uh, I try to give you enough information that maybe you'll see something here that piques your interest or or uh, that. Uh, adds to your overall knife knowledge. All right, so there we go. That's what we're going to be talking about. Let me get all of these out of the way and we'll start going through them one by one. This is what has been in my pocket the most uh, for spring 2022. And the first knife I want to talk about is this one right here. This is the White Mountain Knives exclusive Kaiser bag letter button lock and it's extra large uh, so this is a pretty substantial knife okay if i throw it here beside a pair of two which is also on my list for this week uh, this time uh, you can see it's a fairly large knife um, but it's really feature packed so there's a lot of cool stuff going on here first of all so, um, kaiser and a couple of other can concept knives has also kind of taken this approach but kaiser's been using a bunch of 154 cm which is a really nice move uh, this button lock is really well done because you see how they've angled the the lock interface there and what that means is as this wears this can slide over more and more and more and it's going to keep that lock from developing blade play and button locks are notorious for getting blade play even some really expensive ones will will develop blade play but this uh, the design here is such that it's not going to happen because it's sort of self adjusting which is really really nice uh, the other thing that's really really nice is dual row ceramic bearings on this knife fantastic action and it's great to see Kaiser doing that and and you can feel the difference you can it's a noticeable change from some of the other Kaisers that I've had and Kaiser you know is has been one of those middle of the ground sort of companies I don't want to spend too much time on this but I did want to throw it out there first because this has been in my pocket a lot and every time I carry it and use it I'm just a little bit more impressed with it uh, and if I've recently added back to the collection is of course the we knives fair and forge collaboration that was available through master Op. this is the crux and this is probably one of the the nicer sort of all around edc style titanium frame locks you can get they've gotten they've, they've done a lot right here the handle is a little thicker which makes it very comfortable feeling in hand the blade stock is also a little thicker and this sort of comes from the the ferrum forge influence they're, they're sort of a, a hard use type of knife uh, company they've sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit I haven't been super stoked that you know they had the Archbishop and then every conceivable variation of the Archbishop has come out and that's sort of you know anyway they've so they've petered off a little bit in terms of how much attention they're getting but this is such a great design and this is you know we knives did such a great job building it and the price point on these was fantastic um, and so uh, you know, one of these came up for sale in a in a group that I'm in. Actually, I think it was Canadian Knife and Gear, uh, which you should check out if you're not a member, uh, especially if you're watching in Canada and you're not a member. Uh, this came up for a great price, and I'm super stoked to have one back in the collection. It's just such a great all-around knife um, that, yeah, it's sad that these are not not widely available anymore. But I guess you know, probably everyone who's got one want who wants one has one. Anyway, uh, yeah, mass drop back when they cared about knives. So there you go, Master Op Ferrum Forge Crux, really, really great knife, built by Wee Knives, super fun to carry, super useful and great action. Um, CGRB, let's throw in a couple of these. I've got a few, well, I've got two here to, uh, to throw in. Uh, first of all is the Scoria. This is with the RPM 9 steel, really, really nice. Actually, both of these are RPM 9 steel. Uh, the Scoria is such a great sort of lightweight EDC knife that, uh, and, and for a pretty reasonable price, it's, it's pretty hard to beat. Um, this knife though may come close. I like the design perhaps a little bit more. Um, this is again, a White Mountain Knives exclusive like the, like the Kaiser was, um, this, is, of course, is the Artisan Aerion or 
Arion. I'm going to say Arion. Let's go with that. Um, anyway, uh, I will put a link to White Mountain Knives in so you can you can go check one of these out for yourself. Uh, this is really nice. It's big. It's comfortable in hand. And the best part about this is the deployment. This is one of the most flickable knives that I have. It's pretty nice, robust blade stock here. So there's a lot of good. You know, this knife is still pretty thin behind the edge. It slices reasonably well. And you can see I was using it to open up some packages earlier today and I haven't had time to clean it off. I just made the video anyway. Um, that's fine. Uh, this this was in my pocket literally the today before making this. So uh, I thought I'd include it because I do love it. RPM 9 steel, White Mountain Knives exclusive in this really nice canvas micarta. So um, that's a good one to check out and uh, good re good reason to go over to White Mountain Knives and give them some of your money. Thinking of micarta, the Para 2 project that I did a while back is still very, very high on my list of most carried. Um, S45 VN steel, um, Sharp Dress Knives, Scales, MXG gear clip on this guy. Um, you know, I nothing, by the way, against uh, Casey Lynch. I still love the Lynch clips and would put one on just as easily. Just so happened that the MXG clip was a little more uh, available and I thought it matched with what I was trying to do with, uh, with this knife overall. I still may, and, and weighing down in the comments below, um, I'm thinking about changing to bronze hardware on this. I haven't done it yet, but it's kind of in the back of my mind to do that. So let me know what you think. Should I switch this over to bronze hardware as well? Or is it nicer with the, the hardware kind of matching with the, the satin blade? Um, let's see, what else have we got here? So here's a knife. You guys know I do a little bit of, you know, various things on the side. I'm a minister, but um, I also do a couple of little things. Uh, I ski patrol. I'm a firefighter. I uh, do a little bit of construction, handyman type stuff. And this is one of those knives I throw in my pocket if I don't know exactly what's going on on a given day. Uh, because you don't mind, you know, if, if I'm going on a hike in the woods, this is a great knife to have. If I'm working in construction, I may have to cut some stuff that may not be great for my knife. Again, great knife to have. If I, you know, I'm doing something stupid with my knife, a great knife to have because it's not super expensive. You don't mind breaking it, but it's also really really tough so there's a good chance it's going to survive uh just this is the real real steel h6 at this point this is probably one of if not my favorite budget folders and one that i often recommend um let's see we're we've got we're getting close to the end i think i've got three or four more to round things out let's go next to the mcgruin knives uh Flix, F-L-I-X. Uh, again, uh, Justin over White Mountain Knives had this, and uh, I love this design. I just, you know, to me, this just looks so classy, and yet it's not crazy expensive, and it's fairly robust in terms of its overall approach. Apparently now I can't spidey flick it. Um, they purposely put that in so that for right-handed use, you can easily, wow. You know, all day I've been flicking this knife open and never have a problem until I turn the camera on. But uh, M390 steel, really nice design, nice carbon fiber bolster, just overall, not the titanium bolster, carbon fiber. And it's got kind of an orange peel finish. It's not as aggressive as an orange peel finish as you sometimes see, but that's pretty rare to see this on a, one, a knife that costs only $200 and two, a knife that is production you know orange peel finish is something you more often see on a custom knife i it's this knife is comfortable it's well put together highly highly enjoyable so uh this is a, an easy recommend and i've been working on the review and it's going to be a pretty stinking positive review thinking of positive reviews and knives that you just love and feel good about um uh, everyone for some reason i'll i'll go for a couple of months not carrying this knife and then it's almost like i realize that hey i've been neglecting it and i end up carrying it a lot so the last couple of weeks this has been in my pocket so so much and uh you know it's it's almost the perfect folding knife it, you know really it is the perfect folding knife uh along with a few others but this is just checks all the boxes um, of course this is the benchmade super freak um What's not to love about this knife? I guess the only thing not to love is the black coating on the blade. I'd love if this was just raw M4 steel, but uh, as it stands, it's still a fantastic knife. Finally, the very last knife that we've got to talk about is going to be my 
Chris Reeve knives in Kosi, in Tanto. This is such a great knife. Uh, you know, it's, it's just refined and high-end and enjoyable and simple. And uh, it just brings a smile to my face every time I get to carry it and use it. Um, this, this knife is one of my most, you know, it's almost always in these most carried videos. And I think you guys probably get it. Uh, there's so many things I love about this knife. And I, I feel like, again, I have to say, uh, this is what a real hard use knife should be. It's not hard use in the sense of these giant, heavy, overbearing, ridiculous, um, you know, size and weight. And, you know, the scales are fairly thin. The blade stock is fairly thin. It's got a bit of a hollow grind. You know, it, it's still a very usable, carryable knife. But what makes it hard use is the the size and durability of the components and the perfection with which they're put together. Uh, and so this is, you know, this is a knife that's going to last a lifetime. And then you're going to be able to pass it down to your kids and it's going to be uh, last for most of their lifetime as well, probably. And you'll likely lose it before you ever wear it out. So there you go, guys. Those are my most carried knives for uh, sort of spring 2022. I may do another one of these before the, the spring ends, like sometime in June or something. Um, but for now, these are the knives that have been getting the most attention, the most love from me. Uh, thanks for watching. Let me know what's been in your pocket the most. We will talk to you soon.